Take a relaxing jaunt to the Red Sea in Virtual Boy Works episode 16. I can't believe I've been producing weekly Video Works episodes for five years, and this is the first fishing game we've come across. The vast majority of material Video Works has covered to date has originated in Japan, where fishing sims and minigames are practically a staple of the medium. From standalone NES releases like The Black Bass, to fishing RPGs like Legend of the River King, to the expansive hook and sinker side events in games like Animal Crossing, Zelda, Nier, and Final Fantasy XV. It seems like you can't swing a rod in Japan without snagging your hook on a fishing game. I mean, we didn't get wrestling or pachinko or role-playing titles on Virtual Boy, but we sure as heck had the opportunity to reel in some trout. Well, I say we, but Virtual Fishing is our third Japan-exclusive release for Virtual Boy, and unlike V-Tetris or Space Squash, it's one that contains a fair amount of important in-game text. Luckily, someone has actually bothered to put together a fan translation patch for the game if you need it, but honestly, you probably won't. If you've ever played a fishing game on any other platform ever, you'll know exactly how this one works, and you'll be able to sleepwalk your way through it. Virtual fishing delivers a fairly rigid experience. At the outset, you're required to prove your mettle in a fishing tournament, where you compete with half a dozen sportsmen. You can choose from several fishing locations right away, each one home to a different species of fish, all of which vary in difficulty to land. Only one fishing hole contains more than one type of fish, which means you can essentially work your way up the challenge ladder by beginning at the spots with the easy catches and advancing to more demanding species. The tournament gives you 8 minutes per location to attempt to best your competitors by landing as many cumulative centimeters of fish as you can. You need to cast the line, hook a fish, and reel in as many catches as possible in the given window of time. As in most fishing games, this comes down pretty heavily to luck. You can swap out lures as you play, but you don't have a whole lot of other control options for making those all-important catches. The skill comes into play as you react as quickly as possible to signs that you've hooked a fish. Press the proper button at the right time, and the viewpoint switches from an overhead image of the pond or river surface to an underwater perspective where you attempt to complete a catch by timing button presses to the rhythmic struggle of the captive critter. As I said, there are no real surprises here for anyone who's ever played a console fishing game. As with basically every game or minigame in the genre to have hailed from Japan over the past 30 odd years, virtual fishing takes most of its cues from the framework laid down in Gamu and Hot B's definitive take on the sport, Black Bass, which debuted on MSX back in 1986 and eventually came to NES. The bulk of the interactivity in these games almost always comes down to the reeling in phase as you try to land the fish without snapping the line. A hooked fish will pull against the line increasing its tension, and pressing the action button to reel in the line while it's pulled taut risks causing it to break. Virtual fishing is fairly sparse in terms of on-screen indicators by which to judge your line's tension and the fish's stamina. There are no meters or icons, meaning you need to judge your actions based on the behavior of the fish. I think the idea here was to create a more naturalistic view of fishing to pair with the visual capabilities of the Virtual Boy. Since the hardware was churning out sprites rather than polygons, this isn't a true 3D fishing game a la the Sega bass fishing titles that would hit arcades a few years later, but there definitely is an attempt here by developer Locomotive to put you inside the scene during the capture sequences. The underwater depths are mostly in inky black, so perhaps this is the same aquatic setting as in Waterworld but the fish you grapple with move into and out of the foreground. Meanwhile, a handful of underwater plants and rocks provide a foreground for perspective, while the surface of the water scrolls along with a parallax effect. It's hardly virtual reality, but it does create a pleasantly subtle sense of depth. This admittedly does very little to improve the basic gameplay, but as Virtual Boy window dressing goes, it's not too shabby. Anyway, once time runs out, your catches are compared to those of your competitors. You're graded not on the total number of fish you catch, but rather all your catches cumulative length in centimeters. When you place in the tournament mode for a given spot, virtual fishing unlocks that location for a time attack mode. This format forgoes the immersive sim elements of the sport by ditching the casting and luring phases in favor of a non-stop challenge to simply reel in as many pre-hooked critters as possible. And that's it. That's really all there is to virtual fishing. Once again, we're left with a Virtual Boy experience that feels just a bit underbaked. It's certainly competent enough, but it doesn't do anything meaningful with the hardware. As with most of Virtual Boy's adaptations of standard video game staples, such as golf and traditional Tetris, it's hard to say the system brings enough to the genre to justify the hassles and literal headaches that go hand-in-hand -hand with the platform. 
Incidentally, Virtual Fishing is chronologically the second of three releases developed by Locomotive Corp. We've already seen V Tetris, produced by the same group. Note that Locomotive Corp is a Japanese developer that is not the same as Locomotive Games, an American development studio founded by former Atari and EA producer Don Traeger. This locomotive actually got to start working with Nintendo on the Star Tropics duology for NES and Super Punch Out. Locomotive Corp managed to survive its affiliation with Virtual Boy long enough to churn out a few pretty decent Nintendo 64 games. Publisher Pac-N Video did too, and they even managed to produce some fishing games for consoles that didn't cause severe eye strain, such as Umi no Nushi Suri for PlayStation. Anyway, Virtual Fishing isn't impossibly pricey on the aftermarket, but it's the kind of game that really only has appeal for people seeking to complete their Virtual Boy collection. But a complete Virtual Boy collection represents at least a $6,000 investment at this point, so maybe it's okay to let Virtual Fishing languish in Japan. Next time on Virtual Boy Works, a game that actually is a one-of-a-kind work for the system. Or any system, really.